Okay, so what we're doing here is continuing to dig into some of the nuances of testing software, and we're going to keep looking at things that can make testing hard. So the final issue that I want to talk about in this general vein of things that can complicate testing is what I like to call non-functional inputs. And these are inputs that affect the operation of the software under test that have nothing to do with the APIs provided by the software that we're testing and nothing to do with the APIs that are used by the software that we're testing. And so what are these non-functional inputs? Well, they include things like context switches. So what context switches are, are switches between different threads of execution in a multi-threaded software under test. Now, of course, you shouldn't have to worry about context switches at all if your software under test only has a single thread. And the assignments we're going to be working on in this course are single threaded, but in general, it's very common for complex software systems to contain multiple threads of execution. And so the issue is, is that these multiple threads of execution are scheduled on different processors on the, on the physical machine that we're running on at different times, and it's the operating system that makes the decisions about what thread goes on what processor at what time. And depending on the scheduling of these threads, bugs in the software under test can either be concealed or revealed. And the problem is, is that the timing of these context switches is completely not under the control of our application. It's under the control of the operating system, which provides these non-functional inputs. And this makes testing multi-threaded software actually really, really quite difficult. So let me give another example of non-functional inputs. So some years ago, in the late 1990s, I spent a summer working at a company that made very, very fast networking hardware. And this hardware, for example, would let two PCs talk at multi-gigabit speeds using a switch. And so sort of the interesting thing about the software that we were developing that ran not only on the PC, but also on a network card, was that it was completely independent of the TCP IP stack that normally provides reliable delivery for machines connected by networks, but also it was supposed to provide a reliable delivery of data even when we had errors in a network. And so a problem that we faced was this network, in fact, was extremely reliable. It would introduce bit errors into the data being transmitted maybe only once every several hours or maybe, maybe even only every several days. And so what we faced was a real difficulty in testing the end-to-end -end reliability software running on the PCs because the network was so reliable. And so what we often ended up doing is we would open up a switch, exposing all of the electrical contacts inside, and then we would take a key a metal key, and run it across the contacts that were exposed from some of the chips on the inside of the switch. And what this would do is introduce a massive number of very short-lived short circuits inside the switch, causing a huge number of bit errors, causing the software running on the PCs to have to cope with all of these bit errors. And of course, either the network would glitch for a moment, and then when it started up, the data transfer would resume, or else it would fail to resume properly in which case possibly the software crashed or possibly it delivered erroneous data, in which case we had some debugging to do. And so what I like about this example is we're able to access, using this very crude mechanism of, of running a key across contacts, a sort of a deep level of the system and introduce errors that we weren't able to introduce at any other, at least conveniently, at any other level of the software stack. And so this again was another kind of non-functional input to the system under test that by getting control over, we were able to perform better testing of the software.